tell me a little bit about it then, Andy. Well, my grandma bought her new. Grandma ran her as an everyday car, obviously, through till 1981, when she then gave her to my sister. And then three years later, I had her as a first car and started to learn to drive in her. And then my father took her on. Um, and he passed away a few years ago. So the Mini hasn't really turned a wheel since 2006. Clearly, it's been well cared for and garage because yes. the obvious telltale signs of rust, which would be in this roof gully, at the bottom of the A panel here, at the bottom of the doors, rear wheel arches, it looks like it's rust free. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's obviously over its life, it's had replacement paint. sills and a bit of paint. But the A panels are original. Do you mind if I have a really good Help look yourself. around it? Help yourself. We're starting to boot because there's a, a thing that you always need to be wary of if you're buying little minis, whether it's a Mark One, Mark Two, Mark Three, and it's the top of the rear suspension turret because if they've rusted out, it cost you as much to repair that as it would be to service a Ferrari. Very nice. Let's have a look inside. It smells just as I remember my first ever mini, and it feels brilliant just being in here. Headline is really good. The seats look nice. Yep, it's a basic, so th there's no trimming on the dash. It's just painted metal. It's gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Wonderful. Now, let's have a look at the engine bay. Yeah, do. Which is the important thing on this little car. Not the prettiest. It's not? Well, you say not the prettiest. I can see straight away we've got no clutch cylinders. Yeah, took that out years ago now. So that explains the clutch issue. But before this car gets fired into Hasn't life, because for... it's been sat around yeah. for, for ages, there's a little sequence of things that we need to do and need to check. And I've taken the liberty of bringing down some fuel, some fresh plugs, I've got a battery on charge. Blindly firing up a car that's been sitting around for as long as Ethel has risks of seriously damaging the engine. The old fuel would have broken down and become contaminated. There may be rust on the pistons, which could damage the block. One of the things I can do is connect the battery up and I'm just going to jog the engine over to make sure those pistons move freely. To ensure the engine doesn't start up when I turn on the starter motor, I've removed the spark plugs. A squirt of penetrating fluid will help free up any seized pistons. Then, with my fresh battery connected, we're ready to get this engine turned over for the first time in 13 years. Remember, there's no plugs in the engine, so it's not going to fire into life. That's all you need to do. Little when you tap to the key. That seems like it's moving freely to me. Right, I'm going to be using these new plugs. Usually, you would gap the plugs to make sure that the gap is correct, but I'm just going to go with the, the factory setting, which should be good enough. Yeah. Screw them in. Yeah. 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 Pop the HT leads back on. Ethel's had the same petrol, stagnating in her tank for 13 years, which could be causing blockages in the carburetor. So it's out with the old and in with the new. Leaded, of course. So that's enough new fuel. How are you getting on? I'm all right. How are you getting on? Do you know what? I think I've done everything in preparation to almost hit the button and oh, try wow. and start it. What's that? Well, I found a few bits and pieces. One well, of some old MOTs going back to 1988. I always say a car's history is as important as the car itself. Yeah. But will it fire into life? Give us a try. This little car comes with a start Absolutely. motor on the solenoid. Yes. Fingers crossed. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know well what to done, say. Well done, Sweet, sweet, sweet. It's definitely shrunk, this car. Definitely. It Minis has. have. It's Minis <laughs> have shrunk. It's Nothing to do with shrunk. us, Mike. As we get older, <laughs> Minis have shrunk. Uh, well, listen, I have to say to you just how honoured I am that you're giving us this opportunity to buy this family heirloom. It'd be nice to see her go to someone who give her the next stage in her life. With the amount of work that he's doing to this car, I think it's worth £10,000. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a very fair offer. And Thank you so much. Really hope that Ethel will look after you. I can't tell you just 
from the bottom of my heart how much this means to me. Thank you so much. Really pleased. And I've just gone and bought myself a Mini 850. Ethel, meet Mike. So there you have it, slung out behind me, sitting on that trailer, is a 1965 Mark I Mini. And I can't be any happier, honestly. Elvis, get the tools ready, sunshine. I'm on my way back. an old one, look at that. This is literally my dream car. This happens to be the rare little 850 as well. Why is it on a trailer? Uh, because I haven't driven it yet, it doesn't drive. It starts up, but I can't drive it. <laughs> it's got no clutch cylinder. That's what you're here for. How much have you paid for it? 10 grand. For a car you've never even driven. It's going to drive fine. All you need to do is to pull the engine out and tidy it up. It's because a mess in there, look at it. But once you tidy it all up, it's going to drive like a little sweetheart. Well, let's hope so, eh? No rust at the bottom of the doors. All the seals are good underneath. Original interior. That's not bad. It's some really nice design touches. And, I mean, a bit of a clean-up. That'll come back to almost showroom condition. See? Look, you're starting to smile about it now, aren't you? The wheels are a little bit tatty. Has it got the original? It has. Do you know that? It was one of my favourite little touches on these because they did it so that you could open the boot, put a full-size suitcase in, strap it down, and drive along, and you could still see the number plate. It's great, thought it was isn't ingenious. it? It's great. Now you can see the value, can't you? All right, it's starting to, to grow on me. I mean, if we can sort the engine out and get it running, that's the first thing. But what else do we plan to do with this? These days, things are just made better than they were back in the 60s. And I think if we improve the car and get it running and driving right, I think that's as much as it needs. It's so original. A lot of people, they'll buy a car like this, they'll put it on a trailer, drive it to a car show and show it off. Where if we turn this into a nice little driver's car, something that somebody could use every single day, that's the best way to drive profitability. And get this, there's only 81 850 Minis registered in the whole of the UK at the moment. That's all there is? That's all there is. This would be number 82 if we do the right job by it. And that makes this car so exclusive. That is incredible. Well, listen, let's get it in the workshop, yeah. see where we go from there. Leave it to me, I'll reverse it in. Mike's gone and bought one of his all-time favourite cars, a beautiful, original, 56-year-old Mark I Mini. It's not seen the outside world for nearly two decades, and with only 81 of these cars left on the roads, we're determined to revive this classic. You know, I love the idea of turning this great little non-runner into a daily driver, and that we're not just setting out to create a museum piece. There's a whole host of work that needs to happen under here to tidy up this engine bay. But the first job is to fit two clutch cylinders. One should be on the end of this pipe here next to the brake cylinder, and the other should be right down there next to the clutch itself. I need to fit the new cylinders so that I can take the car for a test drive, which will allow me to work out what else I need to do to make it a reliable daily driver. When the driver presses the clutch pedal, the primary cylinder converts that force into hydraulic pressure, which then forces the secondary cylinder at the other end of the system to disengage the clutch from the flywheel. Nowadays, the reservoirs on these things are typically made of clear plastic, but because we're trying to rebuild this car in the most authentic way possible, I'm using a metal one, because that's how it would have looked when it was new. The problem is, though, once I drop this through the bulkhead in the engine bay, the pin that attaches this to the clutch pedal itself can only be got to from one of the most inaccessible points on the entire car. Our Mark 1's tiny compared to modern Minis. 80 centimetres shorter and 50 centimetres narrower than the latest three-door hatchback. Luckily, having worked on plenty of F1 cars, I'm used to negotiating tight spaces. There, got it. So this is the clutch's secondary cylinder. It only costs about 30 quid, but without one, this car's going nowhere. The secondary cylinder's fixed to the gearbox using two bolts. With both cylinders fitted, it's time to fill them up with clutch fluid and use a bleed kit to get all the air out of the system. 